Shimera. What is Shimera? So that is what this class is going to be talking about. So Shimera is like a mix of animals and plants. So uh, it's an exciting uh, topic in the taxonomy, but not many people are talking about. And usually the taxonomy textbook completely avoid talking about anything about Shimera, but I think it's a very curiosity driven topic and deserves the attention of taxonomists. So Shimera is a mix of animals and plants or any any other kinds of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, lives, right, the organisms. So two kinds of, two different kinds of uh, cells, for example, uh, that is also called Shimera, right. So genetic Shimera is quite different concept, but still it's an admix know of uh, various uh, kinds of the genetically uh, I mean it's a genetically heterogeneous group that is called Shimmera is all about right so one example is Hatena arenicola so it is basically a secondary endosymbiosis in progress it's still happening you see so primary endosymbiosis secondary endosymbiosis as you know uh, th these are uh, you know these are some of the things that happened many many millions of years back right primary endosymbiosis means a cyanobacteria being engulfed by uh, you know an ancestral uh, ancestral archaeoplastidon so it is a it's ancestral green algae so you know that is a, that's a very ancient process but now this is under progress you know Hathena system so it is an endosymbiosis of the green algae nephrosalmis rotunda into an amoeba so that is what the uh, this uh, particular Hathena is about so Hathena eats nephrosalmis but do not digest so can you can you think of it we are eating plants right every day we are eating a lot of different kinds of crops and uh, leafy vegetables and instead of digesting it we are integrating uh, it's uh, you know it's a, a, a chloroplast into our cell have you ever imagined so we can we can become you know photosynthetic right that is a kind of that is the situation in Hathena so it is uh, this uh, a very bizarre incident was spotted in Japan you know the Japanese uh, beach the Japanese uh, uh, biologists have spotted this very interesting phenomenon uh, so it, it actually the nephrocellmis chloroplast gets integrated into the Hathena you know so algal eye spot so what a Hathena can get out of it so uh, the predator Hathena the biggest benefit is that nephrosalmis has got an eye spot so eye spot means it has got a, a small uh, you know uh, organelle so this organelle has uh, phototacticity it can swim towards sunlight so that is that becomes very handy for marine organism because in, in ocean it is a three-dimensional space you see to, to meet the potential partner is not that easy right in three-dimensional you can swim here and there to do for a male to meet a female is not that easy but if the three dimension somehow becomes two dimensional like a one plane uh, meeting potential partners become so much easier you know so that is why the ice pod enabled them to swim towards the surface of the sea and sea surface is two-dimensional you see it's not three-dimensional it's a two-dimensional space uh, ice port how ice port can enable them to swim towards the, the surface because of course the sunlight coming from the top you know and this uh, ice port is attracted towards the sunlight and that is why this ice port enabled Hathena to swim towards the ocean surface which is a two-dimensional space that enabled them uh, to meet its potential uh, potential mate you know so it is a it's a strategy that increases its fitness the dominant fitness you see so that is what the eye spot works like an eye for its blind predator right that is a very interesting uh, phenomenon so you might remember what the endosymbiosis is all about right it's by the uh, proposed originally proposed by the russian botanist uh, konstantin mershowski in 1905 explaining uh, you know, Lynn Margulis is uh, one lady scientist. Uh, so the uh, Lynn uh, expounded on this constant principle of the endosymbiosis. You know, uh, of what we know today, that the endosymbiosis is so all the credit goes to the Lynn Margulis. You know, so explain the origin of the organelles. So how our own organelles, like mitochondria, and for plants, in addition to mitochondria, plants also have got uh, you know the chloroplast. So how these two organelles originated? Originally, it is also by integration of uh, uh, you know the, the food which they ingested. So there is also an example of a, uh, a chimera, right? So plants are indeed a living example of the animal plant chimera, a, a, a concept that we all take it for granted. But yes, 
Uh, it's a primitive animal. Plants are, in one sense, a primitive animal that acquired the photosynthetic ability from the, the bacteria, the blue-green algae, you know, the cyanobacteria. The closest living relative of this first algal food is the marine picoplankton cyanococcus. So current-day cyanococcus is the closest living, living, uh, you know, ancestor. So this, uh, the, the cyanococcus and the entire plants uh, together has got one most recent common ancestor. So if you want to see which was the first food that uh, the plant, uh, you know, the animal ancestor of the plant ever ingested, check it out, the cyanococcus. So what they in ingested. So another example of Shimera is a Paulinella uh, chromatophora. So it's an amoeba that recently, that is around 100 million years back, taken up cyanobacteria as an endosymbiont. So Paulinella took cyanobacteria as an endosymbiont and this cyanobacteria started giving this amoeba the ability to photosynthesize. Uh, the links are all there in the, you know, in the description that is in the course website, please have a look. Another exciting example is uh, Elysia chlorotica. It's a sea slug. Uh, of course, slugs are mollusk gastropods, you know. So it has got an endosymbiont, uh, which is not exactly uh, the whole organism, but only the plastid, that is the chloroplast. Uh, Sometimes the chloroplast gets integrated. So this is like stealing. And that is why the, it's called kleptoplast. So kleptomaniacal, the term means that a uh, person fond of stealing the things. Klepto means stealing, right? So the Latin word. So kleptoplast means the plastid, which is stolen. Right, so the, it's in, in, in the case of a uh, sea slug, the plastid is uh, stolen from Voucheria litoria, which is a heterocon, which is a brown algae, and that is why the color of the sea slug is brownish, you know. So the plastid gets integrated into the sea slug. So that kind of selective integration is known as selective phagocytosis, instead of completely digesting, some part of the uh, the cell gets integrated. So endosymbiosis is an example of selective phagocytosis. So the case of marine ciliate unicellular animal, Myrionecta rubra is also quite similar. These ciliates appropriate, appropriate means steal, the intact chloroplast from the algal food. Uh, the algae is a species of cryptomonad algae and these become kleptoplast that cater the photosynthetic ability to its host. So the case of uh, misodinium, uh, the, you know, uh, chameleon is also quite similar. <coughs> uh, the animal eats the plant, green and red algae, and algal chloroplast get integrated into the eukaryotic cell where it carries out the photosynthesis. You see, there are several examples like that. So another very interesting example is, uh, you know, a salamander, spotted salamander, Ambistoma maculitum. Uh, salamanders are amphibians, you see the amphibia. And endosymbiont is Uphila uh, amblystomatis, which is a chlorophyte. It's a, it's a green algae that gets integrated into the salamander. You see the spotted salamander, the, 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 the spots, you know. So it, it gives them uh, the ability to do a little bit of uh, photosynthesis also, right, because of this integration. Very interesting. Oriental hornet is another example, Vespa orientalis. So it, it is, of course, an arthropod, it's an insect. So this one has got, especially on this one, as you can see, there is a band, the yellow band. So yellow band has got a pigment called xanthoperin in its exoskeleton. It can trap sunlight and convert the sunlight to the electricity. The voltage is released as light during darkness. So it has got photosynthetic ability. Very exciting, isn't it? So oriental hornets and P aphids are solar powered rather than photosynthetic. So you cannot say it as uh, photosynthetic per se, but you can say it is uh, solar powered because uh, it has got the pigments that can actually trap the, the energy from the sunlight. You know, so that is what it is. So it's not like synthetic to the, the biochemical, you see, it's a, it's a trapping of energy, right? So P. aphid is another example, uh, acero, uh, acer <coughs> acertosifon pisum. Acertosifon pisum is uh, what P. aphid is about, right? Arthropod insect. So it can produce a carotenoid that absorb the light and pass energy to the ATPs. So that is what the P aphids can do. So it's it's a kind of a photosynthetic animal, you can say, right? So it's a solar-powered animal, the P aphid. 
So symbionts, of course, there are a lot of symbionts, for example, lichens, uh, fungi, that is mycobiont and algae, photobiont. And now we know that yeast can also be a kind of fungi part of uh, uh, the lichens, right? So algae coming to the photobiont or phycobiont, uh, algae mostly coming from two genus, triboxia and cyanobacteria. Uh, corals, you know, the corals is also an uh, example of a symbiont. Animals plus algae, so usually the photosynthetic partner of both these, uh, you know, the animal plant symbionts or algae. So in the case of coral, this animal is anthozoa cnidarians. So nidarians, you know, uh, like jellyfish. So this is a uh, anthozoans or coral animals, uh, which are sessile, you know, non motile animals. And it has got algal partner. So the partner is usually coming from one genus called symbiodinium. It's a dinoflagellate, commonly called zooxanthellae, right? So that is what the coral uh, uh, symbiont is all about. It's an animal and algae. So nidarians and uh, symbiodinium, uh, you know, uh, symbiosis. So that is what, in, uh, what is happening in the case of uh, coral reef. So two's company, three's lichens. Uh, this article, very interesting article in the New York Times, linked up in the, the course website. So the three is, the third one is uh, the, the yeast, uh, which has only recently been divulged in the, the lichen symbiosis. How about human being? Have you ever thought that we became photosynthetic? Or, uh, you know, of course, these kind of concepts are uh, quite common in fiction and also by the pseudoscience uh, advocates. You know, many pseudoscience advocates, you can see ascetic monks, they claim that they can live with all, nothing but just the uh, air that they breathe, controlling the way they, they you know, they, they, they breathe in and breathe out, uh, and then exposing to sunlight that alone enabled them to live for long. But science have disproven all these facts. It doesn't work that way. It's a, it's a dangerous, uh, you know, uh, pseudoscience uh, purview. So the breatharians, these are called breatharians, inedia and uh, breatharians. So you can search it out. Uh, yes, so it's a, it's a very dangerous group of pseudoscience advocates. They claim that any of this uh, disease can be treated by not eating at all and exposing only, I mean, controlling your breath it doesn't work that way. Of course, the, the fiction, if you look at the fiction, animal and plant fiction or photosynthetic animal, or uh, this kind of chimera also have been featured in so many of the world's fictions like Macquarie Tree or Jimenju is an epic or epic of barnacle tree from the UK, a tree that, that can produce the barnacles, you know, the myth. So it's very interesting to see this kind of folklore, uh, you know, uh, the animal and plant chimera or vegetable lamb of tartari, uh, you know, in, in France. So that is another uh, folklore, quite famous in the Middle Age, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, uh, France, uh, you know, uh, this this particular folklore, the tartari. Plant-like animals and animal-like plants are also quite exciting when you of uh, you know curiosity driven when you of future research you see that leaf insect you can see how uh, how much uh, it is resembling the leaf isn't it it's all about camouflage wasp you see the wasp uh, lis lisom uh, i'm sorry it's called lisopimpla right lisopimpla excellus lisopimpla excellus this wasp is pseudo mating on the orchid. So orchid is also quite similar to the, the, the wasp. So what benefit the orchid can get? Because wasp is mating and through the mating, uh, it can, uh, you know, of course it can, uh, uh, it can release, its, I mean, the pollination is achieved, you see. So instead of giving them the honey, uh, this kind of structure, which is quite similar to the, the wasp. So it's very, very strange phenomenon happening in the world, right, in the nature. So this is another, uh, one of my favorite example. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's like a, uh, it's like what, uh, the stick, you know, it's like a small stick. Uh, uh, wood. So it's an insect, you see, it's a plant like an uh, animal. So stick insect. Uh, the nature is really wonderful, isn't it? Or look at this, it's a, uh, this is another beautiful flower and the flower looks like a bee. No, it's an orchid, uh, just looks like a bee. Uh, these are all adaptations that can foster its survival. Uh, for example, in this case, camouflage or the reproduction for these two cases, uh, this actually uh, enabled them to pollinate to a much greater extent. 
you know so please read uh, my popular science article uh, which has been released a few years back bizarre world of plant animal chimera so uh, it has been linked up in the course website please have a look i covered all uh, so several uh, of these stories in, in this uh, Article. Also read books by Asimov, Isaac Asimov, the famous biochemist. And he's very interesting that uh, he's a Russian-born American biochemist. He has written so many fiction and his fiction like the gods themselves covered uh, this sort of uh, fantasy world that animals becoming photosynthetic because of the uh, kleptoplastids, you know. Or the books of Douglas Adams, another of my favorite author, the British author, uh, you know, The Hitchhiker's Guide to uh, Galaxy. Uh, you can look at his, uh, you know, his book, The Salmon of Doubt. Very interesting book. I, I strongly recommend everybody to read it.